So in this video, I'm going over Lutris, the thing that makes gaming on Linux fantastic. So the first thing about Lutris is one, it's so easy for an end user. It makes it as easy, if not easier, to install games on Linux than Windows, just because you can go to the website lutris.net, click the install button, and it will install that specific game. There's no hunting down a setup file, running it, and choosing exactly where it goes, and then trying to hunt that down in your start. No, none of that. All your games are condensed into one dashboard, whether it's from Steam, whether it's a separate installer, whether you manually installed it using Wine through Terminal. It doesn't matter. All your games are in one spot on Linux, which makes it fantastic. Now, I don't play any games in this video. I don't show any gameplay because I've done so many videos over that. And I feel like if you really wanted to see gameplay, all of my live streams are done playing games on my Linux box here. You can check me out on Twitch. I stream Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. So if you want to see actual gameplay on Linux and see how it looks, come on over. The link is in the description below. So with that, I'm going to show you how to import your games, whether it's native, GOG, Steam, or if we're just doing separate installs, I'm going to show a sample install of League of Legends in this video as well, so you can kind of see how that works. So seamless, so perfect. I absolutely love it. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into it so you can see Lutris in action. So for today's video, this is going over the basics of Lutris here. So the very first thing you need to do is import your games. The thing I love about Lutris is it's one-stop shop. You can play Steam games, you can play Linux, you can play browser, you can play wine games, it doesn't matter. You just hit import games, and from here, you get to check from the four areas. You have your native Linux games. They show up here. These are things that I've installed or have come preloaded on the actual system. Then you go at GOG, connect your GOG account, and it'll go ahead and download all the things from good old games. Then you have your Steam where it says, hey, go ahead and select all, download it. This only shows things I've actually installed on Steam. This doesn't show all your Steam games. So obviously if you go over to Steam and install a new game, it'll pop up here. So this is kind of nice. I just say sync all of them. And if I install it on Steam, it'll show up in my Lutris automatically. Now over here, Steam for Windows. This is if you're playing Windows-based games. Now most of everything I run through Proton and native Steam client these days, so I don't really utilize this section anymore. However, I used to quite a bit before Proton where this would run Steam in Wine and emulate it all that way. Or not emulate it, but it would uh, run it all through Wine. These days you don't need that because of Steam Proton, so mainly you'll be sticking to these three tabs. This one you might use for an obscure game for whatever reason it didn't work in proton now as far as customizing the games this is where it gets really really cool because you can do a lot of stuff so i'm going to pick a couple of non-steam games that i've added diablo 3 this is a wine based game you can kind of see in the upper right hand corner this is wine where if you click this this is a native linux game and let's pick this right here is also, it's actually not native, but this actually uses the, the Steam version of Linux to launch it. Uh, it still uses Proton in there for this specific game. But let's go back to Diablo 3 and hit configuration. And you get to see some really cool stuff. And I'm going to kind of show you what is happening here. Now, a lot of people want to change these icons, and you don't really need to. The identifier is actually actually done through Lutris's website, which I'll show you in a second. The name, you can change to whatever you want. And then the runner, this is so powerful because you can choose your runner. Now, obviously Steam, it autom automatically imports. Linux is your native and all that, but Wine is so great in Lutris because you can install different versions of Wine fairly easily. So take a look at this. We scroll down here and we scroll down to Wine you'll see, okay, it, it has these extra options. So you can configure and manage versions. We'll hit manage versions. You can select and install all kinds of custom versions of Wine, which just makes this super powerful because 
Some versions of Wine work better on other games, and this gives us such an easy way of selecting that specific version that works the best for our game. So with that, you've set up this, you set the runner, you've set your identifier. The identifier is located on the web page on Lutris's website. Game options, you would set your executable, so you'd launch uh, the launcher or whatever it might be here. And arguments, if there's something extra onto the end that you normally would launch in a Windows-based shortcut, you'd put that here. Working directory, I always leave this the same because by default it just uses the directory of the executable. You might need to do this for some games, very, very few out there. I haven't actually used it yet. And then the prefix, this is if you like manually set up a wine bottle and installed everything manually, you could actually specify all that right here. And then, of course, 30-bit. 32-bit or 64-bit right here. I usually just leave this on auto. It does a fantastic job of finding it. As far as runner options, the big thing here is you'd want to like enable DXVK, eSync, um, after you've actually configured them on your system, of course. Make sure you check out that uh, video where I go over DXVK and eSync before doing this. And then a neat thing is windowed virtual desktop. This is really useful when uh, I usually just mirror my desktop environment here, which I'm on a 1440p monitor. I just do the windowed virtual desktop in this. If there's a launcher that is constantly crashing on me or there's a bunch of things going on, and I'll show you the next game, Final Fantasy XI Online, where I utilize this option, which is kind of neat. DLL overrides, I haven't needed to use this just yet, so I haven't actually done anything here. Now, as far as system options, most of this I always leave default. However, environmental options, you can do some really neat stuff. If you actually click the Add button, you can actually add like Galleon HUD or DXVK HUD and show like your FPS counters and things here. Just know this is the environmental variable. So if you see like Galleon underscore HUD equals one or FPS in this instance, and then you just put, you would leave out the equals and just put FPS over on the secondary value. And I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that. But that would be the basic configuration for this specific file. Now, this program, I had to do a bunch of changes. I made a manual wine bottle using my wine tutorial I just did yesterday um, and made that bottle with specific packages from Wine Tricks. And it has a bunch of extra stuff such as Injector. It actually uses something to do windowed mode and adds a little more flair to this game to where I can do gear swaps and other things that aren't on the native client. For Final Fantasy XI, I actually had to, and I'm gonna bring this over, I actually had to run its config right here using the tools. So I went ahead and ran this configuration. And then I also needed to run some other things like Ashita, which actually updates all the plugins and things that get added to the native client on top of the native client. I would run that through here as well using this function. So just to kind of show you, this is how you'd run those tools that actually configure the game files as well. After doing that, the game's all configured, everything's set. We can actually look at the config here for this. Now you'll notice on its game options, it does an injector. And this is the argument I needed because this is the certain configuration from Ashita that launches Final Fantasy XI for me. And then I go ahead and do the virtual desktop because it is running literally three or four programs before it actually gets up to the Final Fantasy uh, 11 start screen. So this is a very complex setup and windowed virtual desktop was absolutely needed. Other programs such as Fallout 76, I've had to do virtual desktop as well uh, because virtual desktop is really good when doing uh, mini modifications with Fallout games such as Fallout 4, Fallout 3. You can start running those extra programs such as Vortex and other things to add those mods to it. And then when you go to run the game, all those mods are already in it so this is how you would modify a game and get to those uh, modded exes that run within this environment most people just never knew that you could actually touch these wine bottles and really make some fantastic stuff happen and the great thing is no update no other programs gonna mess with this it is made specifically for this program
And then here, nothing crazy here. I'm not doing any FPS or anything, anything in that regard for this game. But that's the basic thing. So I'm going to flip over to the website of Lutris and we're going to install a game just so you can kind of see that process real fast. So let's go ahead and go to Lutris.net and you can kind of see all the different things that they have. Uh, I like to just get, click games or uh, you can click games here or you can select the title you're looking for by a simple search. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click games and pick probably a top played game. We'll just go ahead and pick League of Legends because that's on top. And you get to see kind of the notes section. Always pay attention to the notes. It says, hey, old version of Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, and Debian. Uh, this isn't going to work. Obviously, I, I don't run any old versions. Neither should you unless you're, you know, if you're a gamer, you're going to be wanting to run the latest and greatest, especially for Linux kernels and uh you know, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or Debian, it doesn't matter. You really need to be on the latest version. If you're using an old version in gaming, I, I just don't see a point in that unless you're stuck on like some old proprietary drivers. With that said, I'm not on an old version. I use open source AMD drivers, so I'm on the latest bleeding edge portion of it. So let's go ahead and install this. Once we click install, you'll see it pop up here. We'll go ahead and click install here says where do you want to install it to I'll go ahead and install it on my one terabyte drive click install it goes ahead and pulls in the new version of wine which I actually didn't have it's using 4.6 all right we'll select English North America goes ahead and creates the prefix you get mono or gecko or any of the other installer prompts go ahead and click install all right, let's go ahead and run through the script. Most of this is using wine tricks to install all the options for you. It's literally just a one click and away you go and it just kind of runs through the script. I have seen some Lutra scripts fail if they're old and out of date. However, uh, most are successful, especially if it's a popular game. So we'll go ahead and hit launch game. And you'll notice it kind of showed up in our games list here. And on my other monitor, I'll go ahead and flip down to it. You'll see it launch the actual startup deal. So let's go ahead and starting to update the entire launcher program and do the full installation of League of Legends. Very, very neat as far as how Lutris works. It is uh, fantastic for installing pretty much any game out there. And I like it because a lot of these games have independent launchers. So that is huge, especially when it comes to having 10 launchers or 10 system tray icons. Well, if it's in Wine, it'll launch the game, it'll launch the launcher, but then when you quit out, it goes ahead and kills all the processes associated with that game. So it's much cleaner than a Windows-based environment and why I think Linux is a better gaming environment than Windows. Now that was Lutris. I can't speak highly enough about this program. It literally makes gaming better than Windows. I, I truly believe that as I've done this for six months now and the more programs and games that have come into play just in the past couple months, it's just been phenomenal. So uh, the future of gaming is Linux. It's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. With how this is laid out, how I'm able to get on there and just play any game I want, quit, immediately go to another game, not have to worry about killing the launcher or worry about updates or worry about all this extra crap that gets loaded. Uh, you just don't run into that with Linux. The one thing that's the problem is the setup and Lutris pretty much takes care of that about 80% of the games out there. So that's fantastic. And the other 20%, yes, the setup can be difficult, especially when utilizing wine and doing it manually through like terminal or something like that. But just know once you get it set up and working, just works and it keeps working forever. And that's pretty damn impressive. So with that, guys, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment and I'll see you in the next video.